Good morning. Didn't think I was coming, did you? We were a little late this morning uh, getting back from shopping. <clears throat> and we would have made it right on time, but two squirrels ran in front of the car. And of course, um, I had to slam on the brakes and uh, Constance got out and made sure we didn't run over any of them. But anyway, uh, here we are. And we're starting about 11 minutes uh, late, so I won't take you too long today. We'll at least look at the Knight of Discs and the Queen of Discs. The Knight of Discs is Fire of Earth, 20 degrees Leo to 20 degrees Virgo. Uh, that's August 12th through September 11th, if that's uh, your birthday spread. And within that 30 degrees, this card rules the Seven of Wands, the Eight of Discs, and the Nine of Discs. The original title, uh, our Lord of the Wide and Fertile Land, and the King of the Spirits of Earth, King of the Gnomes. The crest is a winged stag's head, which I think you can see pretty well in that uh, picture. His hair is dark, his eyes are dark. Frida Harris says, I'm doing the King of Pentacles. I didn't like what I had done. Someone has lent me a genuine flail. It's like this. And there's a manuscript drawing of a flail. A lovely instrument of solid wood. Most difficult to manage. That was in a letter from Harris to Crowley in November of 1939. The Knight of Discs is unique among his brother knights. He appears to be the shortest in stature. He rides a workhorse that seems to be more concerned with eyeing the lush grass than with conveying his rider. His helmet is completely raised and he gazes at the fertile fields and hills as if in contemplation of harvest, not battle. His flail dangles near the grasses, suggesting the thrashing of wheat rather than the thrashing of heads, and his shield is a disc that could double as a dish that could hold enough food to feed a village. Am I making this up because I'm hungry and dinner is late? Not at all. Crowley writes that the function of the Knight of Discs is, quote, entirely confined to the production of food, unquote. I'm sure there are many geniuses and intellectual, intellectually brilliant individuals whose birthday falls between August 12th to September 11th. Napoleon Bonaparte, Cardinal Richelieu, Louis XIV, Bill Clinton, Madonna, H.P. Lovecraft, to name a few. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the natural character of this card is not that of a rocket scientist. The Knight of Discs keeps his nose to the grindstone and takes little interest in or respect for intellectual musings or finer aspects of culture or civilization. If ill-aspected, he will even make ignorance a virtue and take obstinate pride in his own lack of sophistication and subtlety. Davy Crockett, Annie Oakley, and country and western stars Buck Owens, Porter Wagner, Patsy Cline, and Jim Reeves were all Knight of Discs. Rich browns, greens, and golden yellow dominate this card. And we will, even though we're cutting today's a little short because of unforeseen things, uh, we will talk about the Queen of Discs. And I just love, look at her dress. It's like a body stocking. And she's looking out over a desert that's coming to life. 
her water is bringing life to that desert. Queen of Discs, Water of Earth, 20 degrees Sagittarius to 20 degrees Capricorn. Approximate days of the year, that would be December 13th through January 9th. She rules the Ten of Wands, the Two of Discs, and the Three of Discs. Her original titles are Queen of the Thrones of Earth, Queen of the Gnomes. The crest is a winged goat's head. Symbols are barren land. Light falls on only one side of her face. Scepter with golden orb. Her hair is dark. Her eyes are dark. Crowley says, quote, Persons signified by this card possess the finest of the quieter qualities. They are ambitious, but only in useful directions. Life-giving water to a thirsty earth. What a beautiful concept. What a beautiful tarot card. Her dress alone is worth looking at with a magnifying glass. The genteel author Jane Austen is an ideal model for Crowley's characterization of this card and matches his description in the Book of Thoth perfectly. She was quietly passive, but passivity, Crowley claims, quote, in its highest sense, unquote. She and many of her characters were, quote, quite hardworking, practical, sensible, and domesticated, unquote. Like Austin herself, however, there is much more to the Queen of Discs than needlepoint and country dances. I believe at least on one level, Crowley was having us on when he wrote, they are not intellectual and not particularly intelligent. But instinct and intuition are more than adequate for their needs, unquote. I think he was getting a little closer to the truth when he wrote, quote, she thus represents the ambition of matter to take part in the great work of creation, unquote. Think about that for a moment. That's a force to be reckoned with. Water of Earth manifests in very complex and diverse ways. And these are reflected in the broad spectrum of personalities who can embody the ambition of matter to take part in the great work of creation. A queen of discs can be strong and charismatic like her sister Joan of Arc, or just talented and charismatic like Elvis Presley. She can be ruthless and manipulative like Catherine of Aragon, Joseph Stalin, Mao Zedong, and Richard Nixon, or sensitive and idealistic like Woodrow Wilson, George Washington Carver, or Carl Sandburg. She can possess, possess instinctual, intuitive, and superior intelligence like Nostradamus, Johannes Kepler, Isaac Newton, and Stephen Hawking. Or she can be a giant of creative force like Ludwig Beethoven, J.R.R. Tolkien, or Steven Spielberg. Dark greens and browns dominate the foreground of this card as I don't want to shortchange our Prince of Discs and Princess of Discs uh, for uh, tomorrow. That's where we'll stop, stop today. I apologize for being a little bit late and, and hurried this morning, but thank you for tuning in nonetheless. And if you thought uh, that uh, today's was canceled, uh, I hope you return to my page today and see that uh, we have indeed posted a reading today. So, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.